spelling words, we just make them up. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, when we're working with a child, we just have them decorate up the letters that they're missing. But for the demonstration, I want to decorate up every single letter. And I usually do this when a child comes in for a consultation because I want to show them how powerful their visual memory is. So yeah. um, one thing to know about this is that well, obviously it doesn't require artistic ability, but also <laughs> that um, the more random, the better. So you can attach any sort of artificial meaning to a word. A lot of times we'll have left brain moms or teachers try and create some rule. So every Saturday, every S has to be a sun or every bee has to be a bear. And if you think about it, once again, that's trying to assign a rule to the visual. So if you can look at every word as its own individual story, that's better. The right visual hemisphere likes random. Mm -hmm. So that's we just create, yeah. yeah, so the weirder, more zany, um, it's great. You can create any sort of meaning. And a lot of times you as a teacher might not be as creative, but maybe you have a little right brainer sitting in front of you that can help mm -hmm. um, you come up with ideas. So when a child comes in, you know, we'll talk through the picture. So we talk about how the S um, is sunny. It's usually sunny on Saturdays. So we talk about the color. We talk about where the sun's located. So mm -hmm. I actually will hold the card up and I hold it up above the child's head. I'll kind of show you that in a second. Um, as I'm talking through the picture and talk about how, so on a Saturday, you know, the mom, she must be flustered. That's why she has three strands of hair sticking <laughs> straight <laughs> up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> probably, yeah. Lock, <laughs> locked down with all our kids. <laughs> so, and you know, once again, we point out any visual details. We point out the fact that, oh, this she doesn't have a nose. I don't know if you'll notice that. So a lot of times when I have kids coming in, you know, we touched a little bit on the self-esteem, but that's a big part of this is that we're rebuilding that self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Um so I really capitalize on the visual details rather than the letters to rebuild that confidence and to show them that this really isn't about them trying to give a correct answer. It's just about using that innate visual memory that they have that we haven't been using for them. So um, lots of reframing with this because we're trying to um, build that self-confidence up again. Um, so we talk about that mom and how she's flustered. So she sends her son out to the local swimming pool. Here he is on that green tee. That's a green high dive and it's overgrown with moss because nobody's really taken very good care of the high dive. Here he is jumping into the pool. You know, we're glad it's a e, not an E or an I, right? Because he'd smack his head. We're glad that he's going into that U pool. We point out his shorts, how they're blue, he gets out of the pool, puts his sister towel on. We know it's his sister's because it's pink, it's striped, it's hanging from the R. Then he goes home, he has a nice tree in his yard. A lot of times the child, when I'm doing this with them, they'll reverse the B and the D. So I point out, um, you know, that there's a bush on front of the tree, but really we know once again, if they're reversing the B and the D, that's a different issue. That's that midline issue. So a lot of times we just let that go um, when there's reversals, because we know that we're gonna be working on it with um, the exercises. So um, you can correct obviously, but I wouldn't, you know, worry yourself too much about that. Mm -hmm. I like so then he into the visual at least you know just as a, a catch but yeah. again yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we know that it's a kind of that uh different midline issue going on there and then he eats that apple it's as big as a tree and swings in the hammock so we really talk through almost at ad nauseum the first day that we're doing this process mm -hmm. we usually start with about five cards 
that we decorate up. We talk through all of the visual details. Um, then we hold it up. So actually, I think um, I don't need that screen to be shared anymore. I'll bring that down. I know you'll miss that picture, everyone. But <laughs> so then we <laughs> we'll actually hold that card up above the child's head so that we can see some white underneath their irises when they're looking up. So it doesn't have to be a strain, but we hold it up above their head as we've talked through all of the visual details, we've talked through the letters, then we do what we call five looks. And it really is like a snapshot. So we put our back hand up behind the card and when we pull the card down, we keep our other hand up. Because the more, once again, the more the eyes are up, the more we're engaging that visual long-term memory. So we do those quick five looks and it will feel kind of painfully quick because we're trying to force the brain to take a snapshot rather than rely on that S-A-T-U-R, right? Going back to that auditory. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we ask them to describe the picture the letters, if they forget a visual picture. Mm -hmm. Maybe I ask them what color is the boy's short, uh, shorts and they forget. I say, oh, eyes get as many looks as they need. And we take a few more looks. Because once again, it's we're reaffirming that it's not a memory issue. We need to just work on that visual memory. Mm -hmm. So then we have them spell it forward and then we have them spell it backwards. And it really is our favorite part because mm -hmm. they're so shocked that they can spell it backwards. Um, but the reason they can is because they see it as a picture. So we had...